Hi everyone, this is Nick, and today I wanted to show you how you can create an easy logic model in PowerPoint just by using the, uh, st the uh, template text box that they have and some smart art. So most people when they create logic models, they're gonna start inserting individual text boxes, shapes, squares, those kinds of things, and just start moving them around the slide or the page. And you can do that, but this is this way that I'm gonna show you is a little bit easier and it will get you started quicker. So go ahead, in your individual PowerPoint slide, you just have a bulleted list of all of your high-level categories. So in this case, I'm gonna have inputs, activities, outputs, and outcomes included in my logic model. If it's in a bulleted list like this in PowerPoint, all you need to do is highlight the entire list, right click, right click the list. Oops, not working. Why isn't it working? Oh, there you go. So it <laughs> sometimes it doesn't work exactly as you plan, but go ahead and just right click the list. You'll get this longer uh, menu pop up right here. And we're gonna go down here to convert to smart art. And what I like to do is go down here to the more smart art graphics option, click on that, and then you get a list of all the different graphics that you could possibly have in this smart art, in the smart art option. I like to go to hierarchy, and then I like this one for logic models here, it's hierarchy list. So go ahead and click that, click okay, and now you can see you have all four of your uh, categories in these sort of boxes with rounded corners. Now we wanna have a lot of different statements and items that are underneath each of these. So the way that we do that, is we uh, immediately you can see that the smart art tab uh, smart art design tab is open on the ribbon make sure that you're on that tab go to the create graphic menu over here on the left and then click on text pane this opens up all of the text that's inside of your logic model now in order to add a new level all you need to do is push enter after this and you can see a new box is added and then i'm going to tab over so press the tab key and now you can see there's a level added underneath the inputs so i might just say input one i'm going to enter and it'll give me another one input two input three and i entered another one but if i don't want another level i'll just push backspace and delete uh, twice and then there's nothing there Perfect. So under activities, we're gonna do the same thing. Activity one, activity two, activity three. And then under output, we'll do the same thing. You don't need to have three of everything. You could have less or you could have more. So output two, output three. Let's say we have four outputs there. And then under outcomes, let's say we have outcome statement one, outcome statement two, outcome statement three, outcome statement four. Awesome. Now you can see that we have a really nice looking logic model, or at least the start of a logic model, that we can then go in and edit. So I'm gonna actually, when it's still in smart art like this, I wanna keep it in smart art for as long as possible because it's possible to sort of ungroup everything and break things, and then you can really design it to the way that you want it to look and feel. But it's really important if you want the uh, uh, smart art graphic to stay responsive, that you keep everything in this sort of smart art graphic format to start so that you can always edit the text in this text pane that we have here on the left. But you can also edit some of the things when it's in SmartArt. So maybe I don't like the rounded look of these, um, the boxes up here. So let's go up to the format tab. We're gonna change the shape to squares. Maybe I want to edit the color to green. Uh, and maybe I wanted to do something similar with maybe these first two layers of boxes. I'll change those to squares too. And then you can see those are updated and then my outputs and my outcome statements are over here as well. You can drag them to be a little bit bigger. So maybe I wanna do that. And you can do that to different sizes there. But I don't really like doing that because you can see how it sort of drags and drags. You can't really, uh, you could probably update these if we wanted to push shift and then highlight all of them, go up to the format and then maybe that actually does the whole smart art. It doesn't actually, uh, you can't actually change sort of the dimensions um, of each of those boxes exactly the way you want it. If you wanted to reset the graphic ever, over here on the smart art tab, all you need to do is click on reset graphic and it will go back to its original format. So you can always push undo and you can always uh, undo and redo things as many times um, as you wish. 
Now if I wanted to add another category, all I needed to do is go in here to the text pane, and I'm gonna go ahead and say, I want this to be impacts, but I don't want it to be um, underneath the outcomes. I want it to be its own high level hierarchy. So I'm just gonna go up here, put the cursor right here, and then push backspace there, and that brings it back up to the top. Now I'm gonna enter here, impact one, impact two, so maybe I'll have two of those impacts. Now I wanna show you how you could edit this, how you could break it so that you can create sort of a new look and design and really sort of edit every single uh, option, every single object here individually. So in order to do that, all you need to do is right click the smart art graphic, click on group, and then we're gonna go to ungroup. That ungroups it as a smart art graphic, so it's no longer a smart art graphic now, it's just a giant group of a whole bunch of individual lines and, uh, and objects. And now if I wanna in, uh, ungroup this one more time, we're gonna right click and click on ungroup, and now you can see it's now ungrouped into all of the uh, individual components. So maybe I don't want any of these lines here, I'm gonna go ahead and delete all the connecting lines. Maybe a few of them though I wanna keep, so maybe activity one and two are linked, so I'm just gonna keep those. And then maybe none of the outputs are there, so I'm just going to go ahead and highlight those and delete all of these. We'll just delete that. Now, if for some reason I don't want these to all be in boxes, all I would have to do, let's say I'm going to highlight all of them, and I don't want any of them to have outlines, I could just highlight them all, go up to the Shape Format tab, under Shape Outline, click No Outline, and now we don't have any outlines around uh, each of those text options. The other thing that I don't like um, is that it always center aligns everything, so let's go ahead and just left align everything. That could make things look a little bit nicer. And then you can go ahead and just work with all of these as you would normally uh, work with individual shapes in PowerPoint. But it's kind of a nice little trick to at least get started on creating sort of a basic logic model template that you can use and update and reuse uh, as many times as you like. I hope you like this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel every time I post a new uh, video in data design, mostly PowerPoint, Excel, and Word tutorials. You will get notified every time I post that new video. I had a great time making this video for you. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.